Joining us now is former St. Petersburg, Florida Mayor Rick Baker, named the 2008 Mayoral Public Official of the Year by Governing Magazine. He is the author of the brand new book, The Seamless City, a conservative mayor's approach to urban revitalization that can work anywhere. The book features a foreword by former Florida Governor Jeb Bush and an endorsement from former Massachusetts Governor and presidential candidate Mitt Romney. Welcome to Newsmax TV, Mr. Mayor. Kathleen, it's great to be with you. Well, congratulations on the book. I'm going to ask you about it in just a moment. But first, the U.S. Conference of Mayors was recently held in Baltimore with employment and job creation being among the top concerns and challenges faced by the mayors. Are President Obama's policies, which promote big government, suffocating local governments? Well, I think that, you know, when you're, when you're trying to grow business, when you're trying to grow jobs, you have to look at, well, what, what is it in the past that's caused us to be able to do that? I, I go back to the, the 1981 Economic Recovery Tax Act that President Reagan put into place, which reduced tax rates, which reduced ultimately regulation, which actually provided incentives for people to invest in equipment that would be used in manufacturing, put into place all the things to get the, the free market, uh, the energy of the free market to take off and start to work. I believe that's the way you need to be doing it. And I, reason, I, I believe that the fact that we haven't done that is one of the reasons that our economy doesn't seem to be moving. Some at the mayoral conference backed a resolution to end the Afghan and Iraq wars and channel that spending to cities. Is that something that you would support? Well, I think, I think they're unrelated questions. I think whether you're going to end the Afghanistan war and the Iraq uh, conflict uh, is related to the national security of the United States and, and whether or not our, our generals on the ground whether or not our political leadership feels that to, to continue to try to succeed, to create a workable democracies in those two countries is consistent with the longtime national security of the United States of America. You know, it's, it's easily, we should, it's not easy to forget, it's very hard to forget. We should not forget September 11th, and we should not forget that there are still groups of people, there is an organization of terrorists around the world that want to, want to do us harm. And, 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 and whether or not we continue those conflicts should be tied to whether that is necessary in order to keep those terrorists at bay. Now, a number of cities across the nation are dealing with the issue of pensions and unions. There are some who say that public employee unions should not have unlimited collective bargaining rights since they pit one group of citizens against another, unions against taxpayers. Do you agree with that position? Well, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of fine lines and definitions of what rights they should have should have. The right to unionize is part of America, uh, but I think also the right not to be part of a union should be part of the freedom of America as well. And I think that, that uh, unions are important. They're representing the interests of the employees that work for cities. We have to work with them, try to deal with them. But also the cities do not have unlimited funds. We have to have constraints, especially on some of the long-term uh, pension and medical benefits associated with that. It's, it's not unreasonable uh, to ask folks to contribute towards their own pension as we do here in St. Petersburg. It's not unreasonable to put restrictions on long-term permanent medical support after retirement uh, as we do here and in other places. So I think it's a balance act. I think you, I think there's a, there's a, a good place for the unions to represent the interests of the employees, but I think the, the obligation of the mayor and the city council and those in city leadership is to protect the interests of the taxpayers as well. Now, in your book, The Seamless City, you write about your experience in City Hall, turning a city that many believed had seen its best days into a city on the upswing. Talk to us about what the Baker Plan involves and how other mayors can learn from you and your experience. Well, I think it, you have to approach running a city uh, in some ways. It's not identical to a business, of course, but in some ways, like you run a business, you need a strategic plan. You need to identify what is your mission. My opinion, your mission should be to work every day to improve the quality of life of the people that live in the city with striving to become the best city in America. Every city should be doing that. And then you do that, we did with uh, five points within a strategic plan to uh, improve public safety. That's your number one job as a city. Make it safer every day to work towards jobs and economic development. If you don't have jobs, if you don't have economic prosperity in your community, you're not gonna go very far. To continue to work to improve the neighborhoods and the quality of life of the people that live in the neighborhoods within the city to support and promote your public schools. 
A lot of cities don't see that as part of their job. I do see it as part of every city's job because if your schools aren't great, you're going to have problems getting people to come to your neighborhoods and bring their businesses there. And then to make government efficient, to reduce tax rates uh, as we did, to try to constrain and reduce the size of government while at the same time working to improve the services that you're providing for people. Those were the five points of our plan. Within each of those five points, we had very defined ways of going about it and measuring them. Measurement's a big part of it too. You have to measure whether you're succeeding. Now, in the book, you also write that you cannot run a government like a business. But some are saying that we need to start running the government like a business to get the U.S. out of debt and our fiscal house in order. What do you say to that? I, what I say is you can't run a government exactly like a business, but there are a lot of business principles that we need to employ within government. For instance, as I just said, do a strategic plan. For instance, measuring whether you are going to succeed or not succeed, measuring whether what you're doing is succeeding or not, reducing tax rates, constraint, balancing budgets. I think you have to be physical, fiscally strong. Uh, for a country to be uh, secure, it's got to be fiscally strong as well. So I think all those have to be done. When I say you can't run it as exactly like a business is because few businesses have to deal with public records laws and sunshine laws that, and, and a constituency that you have, to, you have to keep on board with you as you're going along. So it's not ex you can't run it exactly like a business in my opinion, but you have to work to try to employ some of the business principles into running a government. Now you write in the book that by keeping America's cities great, you keep America great. Does fixing America start at the local level? I think it's got to be done at all levels, uh, but the local level I think is one that sometimes is not always nationally talked about. And, and when you look at some of the struggles our, our country is having, they're happening in the urban cores. Some of the, the violent crime that's going on, the murder rates that are going on in some cities, the fiscal, uh, terrible fiscal condition that a lot, of, a lot of our cities have evolved into for, for a host of reasons over the course of years. So you have to work on improving the cities, I believe, as you are improving the country. But obviously, with issues such as national security, national debt, balancing the federal budget, those sorts of things need to be done on a national basis. All right. Again, the book is called The Seamless City. Former St. Petersburg, Florida Mayor Rick Baker, thanks so much for joining us. And again, congratulations on the book. Kathleen, thank you for having me today.